Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chaikin Analytics. Thanks for joining us every week here on the Halftime Show on Stock Charts TV. Appreciate your involvement and, uh, and your viewership. So uh, please remember to leave some comments. We'd love a, a bunch of likes if you could do that on the YouTube. But, um, you know, let's talk about what's going on here in the market today. And we got a special announcement as well um, that I'll get to in just a minute. But um, we got a big event tomorrow. I just wanted to let you guys know about it. Anyway, um, what's happening here in the market? I mean, I'm just looking at a quick overview. Looks like the Dow is slightly up at the moment, but mostly overall, you have the S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell all down uh, between a half a percent to 1% roughly. And look, I mean, we've been talking about this now. Um, it feels like forever, but uh, it's been the better part of a year, uh, but definitely since December. Um, so... Uh, just about interest rates, bond prices falling, um, tech running into headwinds, and that's really not changing. So today we're just going to do a big, uh, you know, a sector overview, um, sort of a, a big picture look, um, and just kind of look at what's happening. But you know, from a from a, a quick overview of what I see really at the moment um, is not much other than what you can see from a quick uh, a quick look out there on the markets but treasuries are mostly weaker so we're getting the you know what do we know when when bond prices fall what happens rates rise they're inversely related right so we saw a big rally in treasuries and rates went down and why did they go down well we had a good cpi print now let's put this all in perspective please 7.7% is better than in anything in the eights of course i get that but it is not low inflation, right? Remember last year, February, I shouldn't even say last year, just this, this past February, which is, feels like it's going on a year, um, that was 7.7% as well. And that was terrible. Now 77 is good. See, it's all relative, right? Now we're in a, in a different path, obviously. Um, and let's hope that's sustainable. But in reality, none of the Fed officials have backed off of raising rates. And I don't think that's going to be the case. Now, we can all make predictions and kind of sit here and say, what do we think or why or when this is all going to appear. But the point being is um, we have the dollar kind of rolled off a little bit. We had good news. We had a lot of short covering. There was activity. It was that churning activity where you get that big bear market rally. And we're, we're going to go over that too. We're going to look at the average market rallies that we've been seeing. And this is rally four, it finally showed up. So we're going to look at that as well. And then I'm going to take an interesting tour um, on the stock charts platform and just look at what they have, the, something called the ticker cloud. And I'm just going to look at the ticker cloud and see which stocks people are kind of looking at today. And then we're going to go to the Jacob platform and just plug in those names and take a look and see what we can see. Okay. Um, so we're just going to let, it, let, the, let the, uh, the ticker cloud lead us today. Um, just to look at some names and just kind of see how everything's setting up. But let's start with our big announcement and, uh, and then we'll get into the charts. Thanks. Okay, I just wanted to put this out there uh, for, for everyone to see. You know, tomorrow, uh, November 15th at 10 a.m., Mark Chaikin, founder of our Chaikin Analytics here, is um, hosting a, a pretty big event. And it's going over just some predictions, um, some new predictions that Mark's kind of seeing in the markets um, you know, there, there's a lot going on and, and, you know, we use the word like reset and things of that nature, but there's a process to all of this. And I think you're going to find this broadcast, you know, pretty interesting. It's a free event. So you can register at charting2023.com and, and go check it out. And I think that, you know, if you've been sort of tossed around in this market, like a lot of people have, um, I think you're going to be excited about, about what Mark is kind of portraying tomorrow. So, um, make sure you tune in. We hope to see you there uh, tomorrow. But let's get into um, what we talk about from a macro level, We're starting to look at the indexes. And I'm going to look at some of the individual charts as well, um, but not so much the charts, but the ratios. We like to look at the ratio charts. But you can see, I mean, I've got the S&P uh, up in this area, you know, where the arrow is. And, you know, I always point that out because, the, look, that's the one that's more most prevalent. We talk about it all the time. It's kind of the leader of the group here. And really, you start to look at these other indices, uh, like energy, you know, discretionary, communications, healthcare, staples, in this top four or five right now, 
are all looking, you know, pretty interesting. Now, XLY and XLC have really taken it on the chin this year. And we talked about this early on, right, early on in the year that these were areas to avoid and that the defensive nature of some of these sectors like staples, healthcare, and even utilities to a degree would offer some uh, safe haven kind of feeling. Now, that doesn't mean they necessarily all go up from a relative basis, right? When you look at it versus the S&P, they have just done better. That doesn't mean they were profitable. So if they lost less, that's kind of that sector doing its job, right? Even though it doesn't feel good, um, it feels a heck of a lot better than losing as much as the index sometimes. So just put that in perspective, right? And so you look at the XLF here, um, which is really the one that's been interesting because it was a tough call for most of the year. And then in this November, late October, November timeframe, obviously with the CPI and all that other stuff, the good news and a lot of short covering as well, um, you, you started to see this start to perk up. And even real estate stopped its downtrend. And you're seeing just some, a series of lower highs, sorry, higher lows and higher highs. Now, these are a series that just is very brand new, right? doesn't mean it's a, a trend change, not yet, but it is working on it. So, you know, I think you got to be cognizant of that and just kind of follow it. Here's the thing we've been talking about now for months. You know, rally one, two, and three was sitting around. We were kind of waiting for this. And, you know, since August, middle of August, we had that big push higher and then it started to roll over. And so, we finally are getting rally four, and it looks like it's bumping up against that area, that resistance we talked about last week. Around that 4,000, between 4,000 and 4,100 uh, or so. And that's kind of where we are today. It's a little higher than when I took the snapshot. But the point being is, is that this is rally four, right? It finally showed up. And what's, what's really happening here? Well, rally four, the way I calculate it, which is um, one of the closing levels um, to the close of, uh, of Friday, um, it's about 12%, we'll call it 12.1%, right? Now, on average, you've been seeing the average sell-offs of around 13.5% uh, on the downside, right? This last one, we saw 19%, it's bigger, okay? So that's going to bring the averages up. I haven't done that math yet, but I just wanted to, to talk about the August high to the October low, uh, that high was around 431 and the low was about 348 or so. So it was roughly a 19% sell-off. But now you're seeing the average first three rallies, that rally one, two, and three were averaging around 15% on the upside. Okay. So we're at 12. So do we have a little bit more? Yeah, maybe. I mean, again, if these averages and the mean regression and all this other stuff kind of holds through true, but I don't know, I, you know, that's, that's really just a, a, a tough, a tough call in particular. We'll look at sentiment. Look how sentiment has changed. Um, back and forth, back and forth, um, where the historical averages are. You can see 38% are, are bulls, 31 are neutral, and just about 30 and a half or so are bears. Typically, these are the historical averages. But look where these were just week ending just a few months ago, 61% bearish. That was way oversold, but it continued, right? It continued for another three weeks. So trends typically last longer than you think. And here we are back to 47%. Now that's well above historical averages. And uh, obviously the bulls are a little bit um, less prevalent and well below historical averages. So we are tilting again, you know, in that space. It's just something to be aware of. Okay, uh, we are back here at the regularstockcharts.com uh, website. And I'm just on the, on the, what they call the ticker cloud. It's really cool. Um, what it is, is it's popular symbols as of today at around 1033 or so. And obviously, it's, you see the usual suspects like Apple, you know, ARC, Amazon, AMD had some big news today, uh, things like that. So I think this is really interesting. This is what your peers are looking at on the system. Um, it just kind of tells you what people are looking at. A lot of higher level index um, quotes being asked for here. And that's a good thing. And then you see some individual names like Netflix, a lot of the FANG names, of course, the Sox um, and some of the S&P names. I just think it's really interesting. I like the idea of folks kind of taking a look at multiple symbols. But, you know, like a name like, um, let's look at AMD. That was upgraded, I believe, today. Um, and I come in here and I type it in, AMD, pretty simple. Now, we're neutral on the name. Um, but that could change depending upon 
what happened here with earnings and a lot of things, a lot of news that came out, but it's still in a negative downtrend. Now it's starting to pop above, but just kind of looking at what's happening here. When you look at that, this is what our charts are showing. Now it's trying to get above that long-term trend, but again, we're neutral on the name. Um, we're not as, uh, terribly excited, but it has a big run really from that $58, $55 level up to what the high was about 75, a $20 move in a short amount of time. You can't argue with that. But at the same time, if technicals start to firm up, which they are looking better, um, they're not bullish yet. And if experts start to catch up, if there's some changes there, we saw an upgrade and some other changes. So, you know, this is a key ingredient, as it says down here, for, for potential gains going forward. But be cautious because the relative strength is telling us something a little bit different here. And uh, let's look at another name. Netflix, obviously. Let's look at NVIDIA. You know, that's an interesting name. Um, again, letting the ticker cloud lead us today. Uh, when I look at that, it's an S&P 500 name. It's in the index. And we've got sort of a, a an interesting picture. It's starting to change trend a little bit, but we are still um, – coming out of a pretty broad negative downtrend um, that's really early, right? It's, it's embryonic. It's so early. Um, you know, some of the recent highs just in the last year up as high as 332 and the stock's trading at 163. So it's oversold. There's no doubt about that. It is a powerful name in the industry, but you know, it's widely followed, right? As you can tell by the ticker cloud, I would think that most of these names here are going to be widely Follow. Let's look at First Solar. I haven't looked at that name in a long time. F S L R. And wow. Well, now I mean, this stock has really been on a tear. Now, in this case, it's kind of overbought, right? I mean, we're looking at the other side of the spectrum, and so you don't want to be necessarily chasing what a great opportunity it was back down at these levels. Um, but again, following gap ups and things that are changing, and obviously, we're talking about renewables and the energy complex in general has been a narrative that's been talked about now for several years in a row. Um, obviously, this name is probably going to get a lot of a lot of look. And let's look at the the index or the ETF, I should say, that um, that tracks the solar industry. It's called TAN. Funny guy, right? Solar, sun, TAN. Get it? Um, you know, that's interesting. It's kind of sideways relative to the S and P. Um, it had been stronger and really held up on its own a little bit during a bear market rally. So it's been a really sort of a you know, an oasis here in, in the desert of bad stocks. Um, but, you know, it's, it's actually not great. Like, it's not great. It's not fantastic. It's not exciting me. But at the same time, um, it doesn't look like it's, it's been a bad spot to be. But it doesn't look to me like there's really any serious trend to the upside or the downside here. It looks pretty stagnant. And then, you know, let's look at some, some you know, one other one. You got the dollar coming in here. Uh, IWM, we could look at the small caps. Let's just look at those real quick. IWM. And that's the Russell 2000. It's the iShare ETF for the Russell 2000. And, you know, interesting trend change, right? We've been talking about this. We had, you know, it, this had hit our targets early on in the year, about 160 and change. Revisited the lows, but actually outperformed the S&P uh, in doing so. So not a bad looking here. Obviously, if rates change trend. In other words, if rates start to not go up as much, you know, small caps will start to benefit as well. Okay, folks, that's all I have for today. And I just want to remind you that tomorrow we get that big event. Go to charting2023.com to register for that free event and listen to Mark Chaikin's uh, new predictions. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next week.